Hello guys, long time no see. Well, today I got some pretty exciting video for you guys. Um, I have Vitor and Drew both on a call with me and we are going to talk about, uh, about a big update that's coming our way, that's coming for Pillar. And uh, I just want to fill you guys in. So let's do this. So we are good. So you guys can introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is uh, Drew Harding. I'm the head of product for uh, Pillar Project. I'm Vitor, in case you can't uh, recognize me, I also changed my hair. Uh, I'm Vitor, Chief Technology, Technology Officer for Pillar. I'm also one of the product founders. So um, this is uh, supposed to be an uh, interview, a conversation with you guys regarding the product, because the product is, for what I can understand, going through a facelift. Uh, internally and on the outside as well. So one thing that I'm curious to know and is, is regarding the, the, the what, what exactly is this, um, this relaunch, this, uh, uh, the product facelift, what, what is it? Over obviously the last year or so, uh, we've gathered a tremendous amount of feedback, uh, both from users and the user experience side. Um, we've also, uh, as we've developed, uh, recognized um, emerging trends in the, in the industry from design pattern standpoint, um, new, new updates in technology, and then with our, within our own uh, code base, uh, kind of changes that we can make in order to uh, create efficiencies and whatnot around the like, refactor of and responsiveness of the application itself. And this is really a, a combination of all those inputs and that feedback uh, leading to what we see is really kind of a, a V2 or a relaunch or facelift, as you said, um, for the product that uh, touches everything again from the interface that the users are directly dealing with to all the kind of code and, and underpinnings under the hood. And, and really kind of highlights and pulls to the surface a lot of these new features and functionality around smart contract accounts and smart wallet uh, that we've been talking about for some time. I think we started talking this as a relaunch and as something I tend to emphasize from like 2017, 2018, where really, you know, difficult and troublesome times for us, where we struggled the product roadmap, or we struggled as a team, uh, we were not satisfied the product we had, we delayed launch, we launched it late. Uh, this is finally, I think, the, the project come to its maturity, in the sense that uh, we understand the roadmap, we understand where we want to go. We have a team that's no longer top heavy as it used to be, it's lean, it's streamlined, uh, people know what they should do, people know how to work together. Uh, and as we started building this feature, we started dripping out features to the uh, early access program. But at some point it was obvious that uh, we couldn't just drip feed all these features coming in. We just need to make a clean stop and say, hey, this is how we see ourselves now. This is the fruit of our work over the last few years. And maturity wise, this is how we believe uh, digital wallets should be. And uh, we, we got to this point and for us, uh, you know, uh, despite being a very difficult year, ended up for us being a very positive year, at least internally, in the sense that we look and say, well, the product you're proud of, and we want to mark this uh, as a relaunch, uh, as the beginning we wish we had, and, uh, and the, you know, the result of all the hard work that went before us. A lot of the the updates too and the, in, the new features and functionality are, uh, they have dependencies with each other and to really kind of uh, deliver that full value, it's important, it, it was important for us to really think about this as like kind of an entire relaunch and how those things all work together because as Vitor touched on, uh, basically kind of like releasing them ad hoc and one off without also rethinking the UX and, and the user interface and, and how that, that can complement these, this functionality update. Um, it, it didn't really, it didn't have the same effect. So we really had to kind of uh, cohesively think about and, and kind of do this full scale update um, 
in in a significant way. Yeah, also you know, on stressing the point of maturity, I think also it marks the change in the way we've been working. Uh, you got very top half at some point. There's a lot of people in management, a lot of people looking very serious. And now we're a very streamlined group of people that are tightly working together. For example, we work closer to market it than we ever did before and try to tie the strategy, tie the product, uh, make sure everything works together and well and we get the best possible you know, bank for buck, the best possible return on investment on the capital we have to make a, a fucking awesome product. Yeah, it's, it's very much uh, engineering led. Um, and product focused and uh, tight, tightly intertwined with marketing and really dependent on the community feedback and uh, engagement as well to, to kind of direct everything. So a question that I have for you guys is that um, this relaunch is, is uh, leaning heavily on the smart wallet feature, right? Um, but how is, uh, and this is something that the community and uh, other members of the crypto, crypto space keep asking me uh, and the marketing team in general, um, how is the Pillar Smart Wallet better than the current solutions, um, be it like other uh, mobile wallets or hardware wallets, and what differentiates uh, the Pillar Smart Wallet specifically from other solutions? In a general sense, um, the Smart Wallet solution and the reason for the focus on that is directed by the need to recognize user experience challenges generally in the space and security uh, challenges around uh, all assets being tied to a single private key scaring people into writing down a mnemonic phrase or, or backing things up and you know it uh, being able to store funds in a smart contract and, and through the smart wallet versus in a key based format um, opens up a lot of flexibility for recovery, backup, usability, um, even the way you interface with other dApps and, and Web3 services. Um, there's, more, there's safer and, and more controlled mechanisms for that kind of experience. So generally it's it's about increasing the usability and and the comfortability of uh engaging with web3 and and being in control of your own money and having that personal responsibility which we think uh is part of the power of of being of crypto and of of this space um you shouldn't have to sacrifice security and comfortability to to be in control of your own uh, funds and your own assets so that's really the what this focus is about there's a few points as well. Like in our experience building wallets, uh, at some point it was obvious for us that uh, building smart contact based wallets is the way to go. There are challenges in the UX that you always be there from the moment you depend on private keys, uh, recovery flows, uh, authorization flows, uh, all, all this, they tend to be very constrained from the moment you're still operating with private keys. Uh, you have a lot more flexibility to do different and better UX flows uh, when you move to contract wallet. So, so this has become a very natural move for us. You can see th this is the only way that we can actually do the things we want to do. Uh, there, there's a few other points, I think, from the different for the competitors. Uh, there are technical elements. Uh, for example, the way we built recovery flow is not out yet, so I'm not going to it yet but uh, which we, we believe are, are more sensible and uh, not the other people are not sensible, but uh, we, we believe makes the right trade-offs in terms of usability and choice. And, but there's also other points. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been rushing on this uh, neobank style uh, wallet apps. Uh, they tend to talk the talk uh, more or less the same. Uh, at the same time, they all tend to have the same problems as the neobanks. They tend to be VC funded. Uh, they are private enterprises. Uh, when they really, uh, sometimes they're even closed source. We're an open source product run by a nonprofit foundation, uh, to total openness. And uh, that's also a competitive factor for us. I believe there are people who care about their privacy. Uh, this is a line that we've been saying from the beginning. And we're here to, to, to respect that. At the same time, they lead the same level of service. Uh, these new products have been delivering. That's an important point too, uh, 
you touch on Vitor around like the ethos uh, of Pillar as a company and as an organization, um, our focus on constant transparency, our, our focus on uh, continual community engagement and feedback uh, as a driving force, recognizing that this is a community project, um, that we wouldn't be here without the support of, of those people who, you know, were involved in the original token sale and um, who continue to be there, like, providing us feedback on the product and everything else. Um, it, it really has, is like core to uh, our values and we, we hold that really highly. Um, the, you know, even something as simple as like the in wallet feature that allows users to suggest and vote on uh, the new features and, and where we should be focusing. Um, this is like our effort to really open that conversation and, and keep that like dialogue open. Um, the technically, um, obviously we, we've made different choices in certain places, uh, aesthetically from a design standpoint, we've constantly kept in mind the non crypto native user and that the new user who is going to enter this space, um, with, kind of no understanding or very limited understanding of how these things work and how we can craft a web two experience for lack of a better term uh, with kind of this web three background, the backbone and really provide a, a intuitive uh, platform dashboard portal to experience all of web three and, and the services that are available. Um, and I, I think that's a testament to also like our design team and uh, a lot of the compliments that uh, I've received uh, over the, you know, the last year and since the product's been live is, is based on, on the intuitiveness and kind of the simplicity around uh, having all this power, but being able to, to control it and, and uh, engage with it in a kind of simple format and you know, streamlined fashion. On, on the values of openness, I think one thing that we, we, we do very well, and, and it can be a bit frustrating, I think, when you're looking for outside, we've been very good at experimenting. We experimented with uh, different platforms, different ways of engagement. Uh, we've been here and there, and, you know, a lot of time it doesn't look like it's, uh, it's maybe easier if I turn to the public and say, well, this is what we're going to do, and we're 100% uh, correct that we're doing this. But you know, this is a fallacy, this, this is a myth. I'm, I'm just saying what I believe in. You should be led by the community, you should be led by the market, you should be led by external factors. That's what drives fitness. And we, we've, we've done tons and tons of experiments. And now we're starting to see, well, this one actually has potential, this one has potential, and we put our resources into it. And uh, this approach to product development, uh, which was a, a hard and fault approach, but I do think that, you know, from, from a very difficult problem space, which is uh, blockchain UX, I think we've been doing very good work into it. And on the flip side, um, you know, the community in the sense of the industry and the other projects and people who are working on uh, creating solutions and driving the space forward, cultivating relationships with um, those that we're looking to natively integrate as a kind of wallet and, and portal um, to this Web3 uh, world. Um, and also at like the underpinnings in terms of the technological pr like protocol and primitive layers and, and how these things all work, being able to have consistent open dialogues, uh, building strong relationships with, with those uh, partners has also helped to uh, serve as like a guiding light and make sure that we're, we're in cadence and we're uh, in kind of with the rest of the industry and we're working together towards delivering something that's gonna drive the entire market forward in a beneficial way. I am personally very excited about this relaunch. Uh, just the word relaunch is, is tingles. It, it's, it's nice to, I don't know, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> yeah, it, it tingles my, my, my mustache sense. <laughs> so um, one, one thing that I'm curious about, and I know that um, sometimes the technical talk um, escapes me, 
but are is there or are there any any industry first or like something very unique to the pillar wallet relaunch when you say industry first th this is this is a phrase that that can be taken to face value right because uh if you just go and say well i'm the first doing this and you, you ask yourself why why the fuck no one was ever interested in doing this <laughs> uh yeah serious well we're doing stuff in a tightly competitive environment there's good people out there and they're competing with us they have similar ideas sometimes they just converge sometimes they diverge so uh, i don't want to go and say we're first doing x y and z uh but we're essentially first in the set of trade-offs and choices we did for this product no one took exactly the same choices that we did. It's not a copycat product. These are deliberate technical choices or design choices that led Pillar being Pillar, and no one has ever done anything equal to Pillar. Yeah, there's some stuff that we often started doing first. There's some stuff that we haven't released yet that I know is critical like uh, uh, working personas and smart contact based wallets because smart contact based wallets have privacy issues so personas are critical and we've been saying this for the last year and i don't see in anyone in in the space doing a smart contact based wallet exactly doing personas uh, but i understand why because it's hard as, as we know very well uh, how to do you know private conscious smart contact based wallets so it's the kind of stuff we're aware of and we're definitely on the leading edge of this work from a product thinking and strategy standpoint constantly keeping in mind how identity and personas plays into these designs and how important those are going to be to layer in on top of these like transactional and value tr trustless value transfer um, foundations it's gonna be critical um and you know it's we've seen a number of um solutions come out specifically focused on identity um but kind of missing the transactional piece or st sitting outside of and it's really the convergence of all of these things where we think pillar is gonna like find that sweet spot and drive home like a comprehensive experience that will be able to al allow an individual to engage in not just financial services and new new age web3 fintech but actual day-to-day -day consumer facing use cases managing of personal information and identity being used as um uh, like uh, uh, in order to engage with services that might be governmental that might be uh, travel related that might be credential necess uh, necessitated so um you know th those all those things are definitely like important drivers um i also think we're one of the few platforms that have constantly had the dao and the community governance piece um, in the back of mind. We're already experimenting internally with our ambassadors and, and the marketing team, how, to, how these structures will work. We wanna expand on these things both internally as a project um, and externally to our community, but also give them the tools to be able to act on these things and use you know, these trust mechanisms and contracts and everything else to enable community governance and organization in new ways. Um, one thing I think that's, you know, as a, a, a quick point, that's a constant focus and as, a, as an industry, we put so much emphasis on DeFi and on these financial services and the importance, and don't get me wrong, like, again, that value, trustless value transfer layer is critically important. It's the foundation by which like all this is able to be built. But I think a lot of, a lot of teams, a lot of projects have kind of lost sight on the, the community piece of it all. Um, and the power of being able to give people the opportunity to manage a shared bank account and create a, a, a level uh, organizational structure hierarchy through which to coordinate. 
complete internet strangers now have basic tool sets to be able to like manage funds, create a business, uh, throw up a community garden. It really is like any end of the spectrum that you can imagine. And, you know, a lot of times the analytical mindset of like, and the deep kind of technical focus that comes from this space misses sight uh, or like loses sight, I guess, of the important human aspects and like human elements that kind of are like are the underpinning of all this. Um, and so I think that's also one thing that as, as a team and as a project, we've continued to keep in mind uh, and continue to surface as like an important theme for how we're gonna evolve as a product and, and the type of value that we want to deliver. Regarding progress, where are we? So we have a public beta right now. We're weeks away and uh, won't go further than weeks away. But uh, it now depends on the feedback we get to see you know, what issues are there and us finishing all the smaller final piece of work and ironing out all the bugs that we can find. Cool. How, how do you, how do you say, would you say that uh, the feedback has been uh, so far? Feedback has been very positive. The, re the, reality, the reality of it is it's never done, right? There's, there's no like finish line. Um, the fact that we're even in this public beta and we've released it and having people test obviously means that we're pretty confident in terms of where we're at and, and the progress made. Um, we know that there are a few uh, missing pieces that need to get layered in but enough is there for us to start gathering useful feedback from a user experience standpoint and whatnot. Um, the evolution in terms of the product um, from a design and a functionality standpoint and general responsiveness of the application, uh, everybody who's already been providing feedback have, have noted these things and they're, they're very pleased. Um, it's been exciting to see uh, the positive response of the community so far. I, I believe there are many, many uh, challenges that you you guys are facing right now, uh, design-wise, um, development-wise, um, because well, this is the, as with everything in this space, everything is very new. Uh, so we are basically inventing things as we go. Uh, but what would you say is like the biggest or the combination of the biggest? challenges that your the team is facing right now you know i would say that all of this has been about laying a really strong foundation and having like a tight clean code base uh considering design patterns that we know are stable that are being adopted and, and there are the right choices in terms of the longevity and how they'll this is going to play out from an industry standpoint um, having that baseline, again, that foundation is critical on which to start really layering in all these partner relationships, these services that we've talked about, the identity piece uh, that's obviously been a constant theme for, for the project. And so, you know, those, that has been like the core challenge is really experimenting, uh, feeling our way through the multiple options available, uh, the different routes we could go, and finally sort of like landing on uh, a strong core uh, uh, decision on, okay, this is what we need, this is what we need to clean up, this is how we need to like focus everything so that now we can really start to grow and blossom and focus on the consumer facing use case stuff. Um, I'd say that's like a pretty critical you know, on the spectrum of uh, uh, mobile app development for like fintech or blockchain, uh, you, you have a few different spots, right? Uh, and you have a spot where you want to move fast. At the same time, you don't want to break anything for your existing customers. And at the same time, you want to do this with a very small and tight engineering organization. So you don't want to be, have a hundred engineers, you want to have a small team. So you actually have a control of burn and gives you time to do the experiments. And finding this sweet spot is, has been quite a challenge and uh, took us a lot of time in learning to try and find this point where we can 
you know, a lot of small blockchain companies, they launch products really fast because they, ha they have no users. Uh, sorry about that. And it's very easy to launch any products you want if you have no users because first, no one's, if it breaks, no one knows. Uh, if you change it all, no one can know again. So, and this gives you so much advantage in speed that, you know, it's difficult for us to match. At the same time, we need to be as fast as these companies because uh, we need to be on the cutting edge of this. Uh, at the same time, we can we have the same responsibility, uh, you know, as a bank or something similar. Uh, where despite not being a custodian, we would tend to try to have you know a tight loop, have uh, threat modeling, you have security programs, uh, bug bounties, uh, cooperating with hackers to try to do something safe. Uh, so trying to find this, and at the same time, you want to do this, you know, under controlled budget. Uh, I can't afford to have 200 people working for me. So finding the sweet spot between all these optimizations where I can have a controlled burn, uh, I, I can have uh, enough feature release speed, and I have a controlled process enough where I can have full visibility, understand the threat models, and the user models that are going around me, uh, finding this sweet spot has been uh, has been difficult. Uh, however, I do think that we're in the best shape we've ever been. So, uh, despite everything, and despite the market goes up, market goes down, and Corona, so well, uh, this is the best moment this company has ever been. We have the best engineering organization we ever had. We ever had. Uh, we never worked so close with marketing. We never worked so close tightly with design. Uh, so despite all the challenges we're facing, uh, and they're facing big ones, and you know, uh, I do think we're doing well. Most of our challenges as a project have been more organizational than technical. Um, and we've really streamlined a lot of that. Um, and, you know, again, echoing what Vitor said, we, We've never been as efficient and productive as a, as a team and as an organization as we are right now. And it's that has really propelled the, the project forward and allowed for efficiencies at the technical level and the development level uh, that weren't possible before. What is coming next after the smart contract wallets? Thinking really forward, what's after that? As you know, we've touched on a, a number of um, partners that we want to integrate. Um, we're starting to, uh, we've actually already started on designs and, and have a lot of the framework set for pulling in some of the first um, services, with main focus on DeFi, you know, streaming payments, some of these other um, yeah, kind of financial service opportunities. Uh, Again, really want to start getting into the DAO um, community governance organization, which also plays heavily into the personal data personas and stuff at some point this year, probably much later in the year, uh, if I had to guess. But yeah, the exciting part for me and, and I think where, where we're going to really evolve the project is um, and the product is on these consumer facing use cases, on these direct engagements with services, all easily managed and, and uh, organized by this, you know, within the pillar wallet without needing to jump from platform to platform and create new accounts and just easily facilitated all from, you know, one, one application. Like seeing long term vision, what, what did you expect? Uh, as we have these, you know, these engagements with specific communities. I expect us doing more and more of these small use cases and filling smaller niche, uh, small niches, and it's all converged into a single super app where multiple small niches actually find what they need into us. And uh, having this proactive uh, customer facing approach, always seeking the customer, seeking who wants to use this, uh, is where I see us going, uh, always keeping this approach. Being able to have all these services directly um, within one single application, um, despite if you're focused more on the personal information or the fi financial services or trading or whatever it may be, um, this is really, I think, where you're going to see the utility of the pillar token start to shine as well as 
kind of the single unit of account um, driving and uh, through that you're able to engage with this entire world. You don't need to worry about swapping in and out or holding this coin over that coin. Uh, things like the PPN and this these foundations we're lay, uh, laying in are meant to easily solve those problems and allow you to switch and, and use what you need, but all through, again, the, the vehicle of the pillar token as kind of the utility and powering that entire platform. So we're excited to finally bring, you know, that to the table and, and elevate that, uh, the value of and the utility of, of the token as well. Crypto is a bubble, right? We're this super niche, community, even our, even the users who are here. And it's gotten even smaller with the bear market and, and everything else because people are highly focused on, you know, number go up as like a core driver. Um, and to that point, like we're never going to be able to break ourselves out of this without focusing on these existing communities, these Web2 communities that are already out there and being able to show them how this can bring value to them as individuals, as communities, as organizations. So the focus we've been putting on uh, partnerships, uh, Web2 partnerships with already strong, huge audiences uh, and how we can bridge between those and um, kind of our, our crypto bubble and what, you know, this uh, application we've built with the focus of kind of that, that niche user um, is important. Uh, I think that's really going to elevate the conversation. It's going to bring new uh, feedback and insights that weren't possible before. And if we can also use this as a case study and a, a way for how to establish those relationships and bridge those uh, that Web 2 to Web 3 kind of uh, com those communities and those, those use cases and values, then it's just a matter of uh, reaching out to another one and saying, hey, like, look what we did for this community. Hey, look what we did for this community. Um, you know, here, here are all the different ways we can add value. Here are the things that we can do for you guys. This is a way for your community to get to be more directly involved as a participant in, in your organization or, or your world. So these are, um, these are things I'm really excited to, to explore. And I'm really happy that we're, as a project, that we're putting emphasis on this because we're, we're putting the focus on expanding the audience. We're putting the focus on growing adoption, not just for our product, but for the space um, and understanding what those communities need. Guys, I'm very happy with this. Thank you for staying a little bit longer, for <laughs> adapting to the multiple time zones that we have to adapt right now. <laughs> I have no idea what time it is most of the time at this point. <laughs> I have no idea what city I'm in. I just, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, man. It's like nothing's changed, but like everything's changed. Yeah. So yeah, so um, I think this is, this is all right. This is good for me. I hope the um, people watching this will appreciate the, the information. And uh, yeah, let's uh, keep developing it and making it the greatest app for the greatest community cool cheers see you pablo appreciate it Thanks, guys see you guys well guys as you could see exciting times ahead we are very close to having this relaunched wallet and i hope you guys are as excited as i am um and of course if you guys want to hear more about updates on the pillow wallet Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you like the content that I'm putting out right now, give it a like and stay safe, stay at home and see you on the next one.